morning. It's a Sunday morning, and that means it's time once again for the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement and everything in between. With the guy who tells us that every house has a story, professional home inspector Jack Milne. How are you doing today, Jack? Hey, Barry, you know, I am starting to enjoy this slight change of weather. It just seems like August has been hot as Hades, and then it it passed on for another week or so. So, you know, I I think one thing I like about living in this area is that you get tired of the seasons, and then finally it changes. Uh, You get tired of winter, you know, and then it changes to spring. (laughs) Yeah, hopefully. (laughs) uh, So... Everyone said, no, 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 the uh, Farmer's Almanac is calling for a brutal winter. And I said, oh, my God, you know, just it's it's one or another, so it is what it is. But, you know, here we are in mid-September, and the market for us has really not slowed down yet. I know if you've been reading the news, the Fed was thinking about raising those interest rates. But, I don't know, in my opinion, China's economy is in the toilet. Oil prices are down to $40 a barrel, but... I still don't understand why it's not reflected at the pump. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see, you know, 245 a gallon. Now, that's in Pennsylvania, you know, to $3 a gallon. I know it's a little bit cheaper over on the other side. Yeah, yeah, you should move over to New Jersey with me because we, we've we got gas uh, in some places that that's under $2, believe it or not. Wow. See, that's, you know, that's what I don't understand. I know every state has their own form of taxation, and... I knew as soon as the, uh, the, um, the, the prices went down last spring, of course, what's, what's uh, Harrisburg do? They jump another nine cents of tax yeah, you yeah. Know, on, onto the gallon of gas, so it put us right back where we were. But, you know, that, that's a government for you. The other thing that I find surprising is the cost of roof shingles uh, because they have not gone down, even though the price of oil has dropped uh, 60%. So um, I, I'm still not quite sure what's going on with that. But don't, any of you who need roofs, I would still suggest that you get them on as soon as possible because I don't think you're going to see a drop as to their costs. But, you know, we're I think at the end of the day, you know, just because of the government, we're getting taken advantage of a little bit. But, you know, the Fed gives loans to banks at either 0% or 0.25%. And, of course, we can't get that either. And so, you know, the world economy will eventually help, you know, our mortgage rates down the, you know, down the road. But, you know, what I'm still seeing are, are the high threes and the low four, four percentages. And that's pretty good. And, you know, finally, a, a good one for the consumer. You know, if they're not going to be raised in September, I can't see them raising rates again until the spring of 2016. And I, I really don't think they want to affect the holiday shoppers, you know, by being a Scrooge. But, but then again, they are the government, so we'll have to wait and see. So let me get off my little political stump here because I'm, I'm not uh, one of these 22 guys running for president. But, but today's segment, I thought it was a really cool one. It's, it's what it takes to be a home inspector. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on that, of course, being one for the last 33 years. But before we start, of course, I want to thank my sponsors, because without them, I wouldn't be able to spend time with you this morning. So Bucksmont Inspections, Rob Bowie, again, I was fortunate to have him on the air just only a few weeks ago. And uh, we talked about the maintenance of on-site sewage systems. So, folks, if you missed the segment and, and you have a, a home where you, if you flush the toilets and you run your sinks and it lands on your property and not so on, you know, the public sewage system, reach out to Rob at 215-669-4213. His website is BucksmontInspections.com. And, you know, Rob's a sewage control officer, extremely knowledgeable with this type of system. So... I only like to deal with the best, and Rob is definitely one of those. Burr Exterminating uh, from Glenolden, Pennsylvania. He helps us service uh, the Tri-County area in Chester County, Montgomery County, and Philadelphia, and Delaware County, of course. Um, and his website is com. His folks, his uh, phone number, excuse me, is 610-586-5640. Pest Blaster, they do get involved in radon, mold, wood-destroying insects, as well as pest removal. 
They're out of Hamilton, New Jersey, but once again, they service quite a large uh, territory for us, as being a tri-county, 215-295-5555. Uh, the website, again, is pestblaster.com. Brainfleshgear.com, eclectic uh, sportswear, everyday wear. You need it, they make it. Uh, so it's simple as that, brainfleshgear.com, or email at contact at brainfleshgear.com. And, of course, I always finish with Tri-County Inspection Company. Uh, we passed our 30th anniversary in July this year, and, and we are busy. We're still conducting anywhere between 35 and 40 property evaluations a week uh, from shopping centers, strip malls, uh, light industrial, historical, commercial, residential, investment. Uh, you're buying, you're selling, you're doing anything with real estate. Take a look at us. I mean, we're, our website is tcinspect.com. Uh, we do service 15 counties, uh, but the Bucks and Montgomery County number is 215-295-2030. Delaware County, 610-296-2004. Lehigh Valley, even up there, folks, 610-346-7880. And let's give South Jersey at 856-853-4224. So uh, please let the sponsors know that you heard their, uh, their ad on the House Whisper show. And um, and they appreciate it, and so do I. So the email box is filling up again, and I want to thank you so much for responding to the show. Uh, Julia from Feasterville, uh, which is in Pennsylvania, assisted me uh, with today's topic. And uh, this is her letter. She goes, Jack, my husband is retiring from 35 years in business. He's very handy around the house and helps our neighborhood with their projects. He, he knows how to do some plumbing and electrical work. I thought that he could become a home inspector. Uh, so what does it take? <clears throat> so I said, Julia, thanks for the topic. And please, folks, email me at the House Whisper Show at gmail.com. And all previous shows, of course, can be found at thehousewhispershow.com. Uh, and all shows, I love this, are podcasts from Sunday to Sunday at www.dbam.com. So all I ask is pass the word. So here we go. What's it take to be a home inspector? And, and, Julia, I had to give this a lot of thought because, um, like I said, after 32 years or almost 33 years of being in the business, I have seen inspectors come and go. And, unfortunately, our business choice is extremely risky, and many good home inspectors have passed on. Uh, a dear friend of mine, Joe Kelly, within the past month or so, Pat Tyrell, a former employee of mine, passed on about two years ago. John Ferraro, Gail Orbendorfer, and just uh, just to name a few. Um, and, and these were all from our local Tri-State Ashy chapter, uh, but other local chapters as well. Now, you don't have to be an expert in every aspect of the home, but it does help. You need to know about roofing, uh, what we call HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and structure. And you have to know it all. And one thing I, I tell everybody I, I interview is you can't have any fears. Um, you have to be able to climb roofs. Um, you know, you do have to do what I call the snagglepuss in crawl spaces. You do have to face critters, and that can be from uh, snakes to, to bats. Um, and you do have to, speaking of bats, you have to also bat away spider webs. And, you know, sometimes you've got to talk to the man upstairs to help you get off the roof that really didn't look that steep from the ground until you sit on the ridge realizing that you need to get down without slipping and falling and, and possibly breaking bones. Uh, and, unfortunately, as we get older, they get more fragile. So after 30 years, uh, I, I tend to make what I do look easy. Um, and, and as I meet my clients and, and share the wealth, of information that I've learned over three decades, um, I think that truly every expert of any trade or occupation should make the career look easy. And, and that's why they are called experts. And, and Julia, honestly, when I knock on a seller's door and I represent the buyer, I am deemed an expert. And today's realtors know who uh, a, a professional home inspector is, and one who is not. And it's the way that you deal with, uh, with everyone on site. And that can be the buyer, it can be the seller, it can be the realtors, it can be the buyer's parents, and all the vendors who show up. 
and you, and you must have good bedside manner because too many homes have issues that must be explained in everyday language. And plus, sometimes uh, giving A, B, or C options. But as as important, it must be reported in a way that all parties understand what condition the house is currently in, plus, and one more plus, what to anticipate in the near future. So I think it's really important that a good home inspector have people skills. They have to, they have, to have dialect. They have to be, speak clear. They have to be concise and, and also to the point. And, and, and honesty and ethics uh, all play a role in becoming a good home inspector. I think humility is also important. You have to learn to be patient. You have to listen to the full question. You have to give the best answer to the question, although, again, there could be three circumstances that could work, and please, you never have to let your ego get in the way of what you may know. And, it's, and, it's all, and you have to be all but relaxed. You have to laugh. You have to spend quality time with your client as they are depending on you to make that largest purchase of your lives and their lives. So, Barry, why don't we break real quick for a commercial? Okay. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you what it really takes to be a home inspector in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I can't wait. You are listening to the House Whisperer Show right here on WWDB. Jack Milne is the House Whisperer, and he is the home inspector of, uh, of choice for thousands of people. Uh, we'll take a break, and we will be right back with more at WWDB. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own Brain Flush. Visit BrainFlushGear.com or email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucks Mont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucks Mont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215 66 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 30 years. For all of your real estate transactions, call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856 856- 853-4224. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They have performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. Call 215-295-2030 or 856-853-4222. 
As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months, looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Okay, we are back with Jack Milne, the house whisperer, and today's topic is what does it take to be a home inspector? And Jack, let's get back to you. Well, thank you, Barry. And um, from the beginning segment, I got an email from Julia from Feasterville, who has a great topic for today's show, and it's what it takes to become a home inspector. And for what I now call part two is going to be the meat and potatoes. So if you live in New Jersey, to be a home inspector it takes 120 credit hours of education, which roughly, folks, is about three weeks. You have to pass a test, and you have to do the equivalent of 40 what we call field man hours um, conducting home inspections, which in, in my vernacular is about 16 home inspections. And you can get your home inspector's license. Uh, there's really not much uh, to it. And right now, New Jersey have, has unfortunately one of the worst requirements in the country to be a home inspector. At one point, New Jersey had the harshest requirements to become a home inspector because you almost had to do an apprenticeship with a home inspection company for two years before you could go out and, and hang your in quote, what I call shield. And what I find is that 90% of this business is sole proprietors. I'm one of the few companies that has, uh, has multiple inspectors, and God bless them all. But um, I, they, it's very difficult for a home inspector who is a sole proprietor to try to help train his competition. So when this law passed in 1996 in, in New Jersey, the home inspectors in Pennsylvania kind of saw the writing on the walls because New Jersey and Pennsylvania do a lot of things almost hand in hand. So what we did as home inspectors, I was on the board of Tri-State ASHI at the time, was a visit with a Senator Stu Greenleaf, who still represents the abington Jenkintown area of, of, uh, of Pennsylvania. And we basically you know, blew off an old law that he wrote back in the 80s and fine-tuned it for today's uh, era. And that's what became our home inspection law in 2001. The problem is, is Pennsylvania's law is worse. Now, licensing, well, and let me back up. And the, way I, the reason I say it's worse is that there's not a licensing requirement for home inspectors in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You do have to be compliant. I'm going to explain that in a, in a few minutes. But as I tell my clients, there's no gods who look down on us home inspectors to see what kind of job we do because it's a self-enforcing law. So what I have found since our law went into effect in 2001, that licensing can be either a blessing or a curse. And I think a license should hold you above others who don't have a license. But if the bar is set so low um, and, you know, it, is the inspector that you hired truly qualified? And I, and I think that's a great question. And again, in, in Pennsylvania, there's no licensing requirement. And being self-enforcing, there's no one who kind of keeps a, you know, an eye on us except really the real estate community and the, the beautiful thing called referral. So um, there's, there's not much you can do to you know, you can find a qualified home inspector. I'm going to tell you what to do about that. But um, we, we tried for 12 years to try to protect uh, the, the consumer by licensing. 
But at the end of the day, what we did is we formed a group called the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. And I was its president and founder, I mean the founder from 2001 to 2006. And like I said, you know, we tried for almost 12 years to try to protect the, the consumer but to no avail. And, you know, what I would – unfortunately, I think – I think the government would probably screw it up anyway. But what I have found, and I think the good news is, is that for the past 15 years, complaints about home inspectors have dropped. And and now with 90 to 95 percent of all home buying and building purchases having inspections, I think expe- expectation from the consumer to the inspectors has become more realistic. And And I think they've become to realize that we can't be perfect, but knowledge and report writing and, and the association of which the inspector belongs, I believe, is most critical. So, Julia, if your husband wants to get into the profession, I, I believe in education and, and just don't you know, count on this 120 credit hours of education. You want to go to the ASHI school or an accredited school uh, so that you have, uh, your husband has firsthand uh, knowledge and hand-on experience, which I believe is, is the most important. And the local home inspectors in the area belong to ASHI, which is the American Society of Home Inspectors, or NAHI, the National Association of Home Inspectors. And I know that the ASHI organization does offer mentoring and the opportunity to ride along um, with the pros. And you know what? This will get him out of the house. He can see what we do for a living. I think for what we call the first five ride-alongs, there there is no uh, there's no fees associated. But I think the mentoring is such an important part because it helps you establish a business plan and to see if it's right for him. And I don't think it's what I call no harm, no foul if it doesn't work. And in Pennsylvania, to be a home inspector, we talked about New Jersey, so let's talk about Penn C. In Pennsylvania, an inspector must be what we call a full member of good standing of National Home Inspection Association. Now, ASHI, again, the American Society of Home Inspectors, requires 250 fee-paid inspections. Uh, you have to pass in the National uh, Home Inspectors exam. You have to do 100 mentored inspections with a compliant home inspector must have errors and emissions insurance, and have to maintain educational requirements as required by the National Association. Now, uh, inspectors, uh, when they call me, uh, you know, and, and I discuss what it takes, I tell them not to quit their day job because I believe it's a lot like selling insurance, and it's about the only assimilation that I can have, where you have to sell yourself to the public, and it can take some time to establish your business. And there's also costs involved. I think a good education should run you between $4,000 and $5,000. You should absolutely incorporate. And please, folks, no LLCs. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to protect your assets, and that's going to run you maybe from twelve to $1,500. Mentoring to do 100 fee-paid inspections, the mentors should get paid as they're teach, taking their time to train you, figure about three to $4,000. Test taking about two hundred dollars. Errors and emissions insurance for new inspectors is higher because of lack of experience. And I can tell you, you will be sued. You will be sued. And so you can probably count on spending anywhere from twenty five hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars, depending on on how many years um, and what kind of training that you have with your current occupation. If you were a general contractor, your E and O insurance is going to be less than you if you were a financial advisor, and you know these are all hurdles that you have to run over. But this career absolutely has many highs, and thank God only a few lows. Yet it, it, it keeps you physically fit. And my doctor keeps saying, you know, how do you stay fit? You know, do you go to the gym? I said, no, I go to work. <laughs> <laughs> and absolutely. And again, you can't have to have any fears because if you have a fear of a ladder, then you're going to be afraid of the roof. If you're afraid of walking heights and have have that fear, then you don't belong on a roof. And and what I I truly enjoy is I help people every day. And and to me there's nothing like it. And I do have a true passion for what I do. And I can guarantee you, Julia, every day is different. 
the clients are different, the environments are different, the houses are different. And, um, you know, Tri-County has inspected 75,000 structures. I've probably done 15 to 18,000 of those. And, and I make friends all along the way. And I think the, the best thing now is that I've got my clients who were parents of young children 20 years ago saying, you may not remember John, he was six, but now he's buying his first home. And I'm surprised, Jack, you're still in the business. <laughs> so I think it keeps you young, it keeps you active, and uh, it really um, makes you think. And, and I think as, uh, as I grow older and my wife says, what do you do, want to do when you retire? I said, I want to go to work. And it's one of the few occupations, I think, that as you get older, uh, you can do at least uh, one, maybe two inspections a day, depending on the property, and know that you've helped uh, the general public make, again, the biggest decision of their lives and, and make sure that they go into that property eyes wide open. But at the end of the day, Julie, your husband must be an expert. So if he's interested, have him reach out to Tri-State ASHI. Uh, or the American Society of Home Inspectors at ASHI.org or NAHI, N-A-H-I.org. Have them uh, attend meetings. Have them meet other inspectors. Uh, like I said, there's no harm, no foul if he, if he wants to try to get into the profession. Hey, Jack, that clock has caught up with us once again. Well, Barry, it doesn't take long. And, again, I can talk about this one for probably hours. But next week we're going to talk about sheds, okay, those little outbuildings. And the topic's going to be love them or hate them, but you may need one. So until next week, please spend time with friends and family, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Same time, same station, for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And you can listen to previous programs. You can listen to the same show over again if you miss something. Visit thehousewhisperershow.com. I'm Barry Reisman. Thanks for listening to WWDB Talk 860. Oh!